How are you today? It's good to be with you to celebrate another day of having communion with you. I'm very grateful for the chance to be here. Um, if you are, if you are not watching this live, you can go forward um, 10 minutes to when the study starts. Hi, Pam. Hi, Tracy. Hey, Paula. Oh my goodness, this morning has just been unbelievably difficult. My computer froze up. I couldn't open anything. I had no notes. I had no, uh, no light. Oh my goodness, it's just been a, <laughs> just down to the last wire. LA, good morning, Paula, Leonard. I'm so glad you're here. I, I just can't tell you the, the stress that we were going through this morning because I guess my word decided to back itself up this morning. And so nothing worked on my computer. And then nothing would open and it was just a mess. <laughs> Hi, Colleen. Hi, Rodell. <laughs> He's telling you Word up, uh, updated overnight and locked out my computer. It was it was so stressful. Nothing would happen. I had no notes. I had nothing. <laughs> but uh, thank you, Leonard. I'm I'm the light. Amen. Well, so are you. <laughs> Amen. Oh, it's, I'm so relieved that we got on. I I texted Tracy. I couldn't send her the scriptures because I had I didn't know what they were, and so so we're just kind of we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants today. But at least we're flying. Amen, amen. So this is the time of uh, we're coming into Passover. Hi Shante, good to see you coming into Passover, and so I wanted to mention to you that I have um, a couple books because, you know, Passover celebrates the giving of the Holy Spirit. And so the one book I have is, uh, and of course the writing is backwards because it's my front phone, but this is uh, Why I Speak in Tongues. And it's, it's really a good book for people that want to know why they should want to do that and how to what the bible really says why they need to speak in tongues uh new ideas uh, hundreds of questions are answered in here and so i uh this is such a timely uh book for this moment so i hope you'll consider that shante hi candace sean paul i'm so Grateful you guys are, are here. Oh, I feel like I've been running a marathon this morning. <laughs> to try to catch my breath, Candace. I, uh, I also, I have this book called Apostolic, Apostolic Guidelines to the Prophetic. And this book, you can get these on my website. This book is, um, is, is the protocol for the prophetic. So if you are going to a church and they don't want to receive you, this will help you know how to do that. Good morning. And it will help you know how to uh, move to the next level and to be accepted by other churches and other ministries. Prophecies as old as the Bible, but many don't understand how to apply it. And this book here, this book is um, used by so many churches as their standard, as their protocol for their church. I mean, lots and lots and lots of churches have embraced this book as their um, standard so that people will know when they go in the church, they they give them this book and say, this is what we expect. So it, it's, a, it's a really uh, profitable thing for you to look at. We take an apostolic look at the prophetic. And we put um, 
strategy and guidelines to the prophetic to make it uh, safer for everybody. You know, uh, not everybody is a prophet. Everybody can prophesy, but not everybody is a prophet. And so we need to keep things safe. We need to keep it right for the church. And, and so I've written this book in hopes to put more order into... You pulled that book out last night. All right, good, good. Well, we, um, we have this time ahead of time so that you can get your um, <clears throat> symbols ready for communion and so you can share this page. Please share, please share this page with your friends. Share it on your page. And please uh, write the names of your friends, their Facebook name in, the, in your conversation here. Hi, Melanie, good to see you. And so that they'll be invited and sometime during the day today, they'll, they'll know to, to uh, take a look. And they do, I've followed that through and it really makes a difference. Cindy, good morning. I'm so glad that you're here today. I'm glad that you made it. Because one never knows when you, uh, a lot of people are telling me they're starting back to work. And uh, so it's always good when you can join us now live rather than just later. Oh, so here we are. And uh, I have never had such a time uh, trying to get everything together because like I was explaining at the first part, um, my computer stopped working. I guess Word decided to update over the night and it locked my computer totally up. Nothing would work. My mouse wouldn't work. I couldn't even turn it off. Um, the, turn the computer off. Everything went wrong this morning. And I'm telling you, uh, at 11.01, .01, we finally got things to where we could, we could come on today. So I'm grateful. But I'm still a little bit like, ah, we just barely made it today. <laughs> so grateful to be with you and to have this time. And, and, and we're grateful for our health and for our life and for this moment in time to be together and to connect and to know that God is with us. I'm so grateful that you would well, take your time to watch with me and to learn with me. This is the time for us to, to increase our knowledge and to take that knowledge and turn it into understanding so that we might have a, a, a way of operating our life in wisdom. What an exciting moment in time. It is time for us then to get ready to come together. Hi, Selena. So glad you're here. Jenna, I'm glad you're here. I try to acknowledge people, but after we start talking, it's really hard for me to see, to see who else is coming on. But it's 11.11, 11 and I am particularly thankful today to, to be with you. I'm Dr. Kwani. And today we're going to talk about first fruits. Because as we said, uh, Passover is on celebrated on May 31st. And first fruits is celebrated this year on May 8th. So I thought we could take some time this week to just pull into pull into the time. Uh, that we're living in to pull into the time of understanding what first fruits is. And we talked yesterday about how offering ourselves and the fruit of our lives is a first fruit. And everything that we do is, a, is an offering to the Lord. Joseph, good morning. Good morning. So what we, we're growing fruit in our garden that's what we've been saying the garden of our heart has been growing fruit and and we offer 
that fruit up for the harvest. That's a new application, New Testament application of first fruits. Leviticus says, when you come into the land which I give you and you reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. Now, this is an Old Testament application. But then we have to wonder what is the New Testament application? The, the word first fruits is the beginning, the promise, or the chief reason. So Israel was holy to the Lord and the first fruits of his harvest. They were the beginning of the Lord's harvest. But first fruits has um, two separate ideas. And one of them is that which is first or beginning or chief. And the second idea is uh, being part of the whole that follows or the earnest pledge of the whole following. And to me, that is such a perfect picture of communion, isn't it? To be a part of the whole of the loaf that is following. So in the Old Testament, the first fruits were a shadow of the coming Messiah. And this is an interesting thing because it's about him. Uh, first fruits is about Jesus raising from the dead, never to die again. So the actual um, dates of the first fruits, even on a Jewish calendar, are confusing. The dates are confusing because we don't know exactly when Jesus raised from the dead, or when he ascended to God, rather, is what I mean to say. Because you remember how he met, um, when he rose from the tomb, and he encountered Mary Magdalene. And 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 uh, first she thought he was a gardener, and because she didn't recognize him. And then he said, don't touch me, right? You remember that? You remember when that happened? And, and he said, don't don't touch me don't don't relate to me in a way that's familiar don't try to put me back in the way you used to know me don't touch me physically for i and he said for i have not ascended to my father don't touch me because i have not ascended you remember that verse and then that night he said he told mary go tell the disciples to meet me and then that night he he met the disciples and I've written a lot about this particular idea in my new book, um, Revealing the Mystery of Christ. But Jesus said, don't touch me. Go tell the disciples to get together because I'm coming over, right? Morning, Marie. And then he went to the apostles that night and he said, touch me, feel me, see, put your hands on through my hand. So in that time between seeing Mary Magdalene and I haven't ascended, don't touch me, to that very evening when he said, touch me, he had ascended. But apparently, that's not the one that most people count. Because Jesus stayed on the earth then for 40 days. And then in Acts 1, it says, he arose into the clouds. And so that 40 days then is the one that most people count as first fruits. But there's some confusion because some people count the day, after, the day he resurrected as first fruits. And some people call the day that he finally arose off this earth as first fruits. So is that clear? And Paul, Paul tells us that we are raised up with him. What a phenomenal idea. We are raised up with him as first fruits. Paul says that Christ is the first fruits of those who've fallen asleep. Good morning, Marie. Good morning, Pastor Nana. I'm so glad you're here. 
Christ is the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Because he rose from the dead, we can rise from the dead. It says, in Christ we will be made alive, but each in his own order. Each in his own order. As we look at the Old Testament first, we see that, that they offered their harvest to the Lord. And if you didn't see yesterday, I, I hope you'll watch yesterday because it really helps clarify a lot of this because we're trying to be consecutive with our understanding. So in the Old Testament, on first fruits, they raised up an offering to him. And they, they get, and the priest raised up the loaves of bread on first fruit and people came from far and near to this celebration. And this celebration seemed to be going on for quite a while. And there's a place then that they give an offering and each person comes with an offering from their harvest to first fruit. And, and, it, and it symbolized their trust in God. I'm, I'm giving you this part of my harvest because I believe that you'll give me more. And it was with this, this harvest that was what sustained the priests because the priests couldn't farm or work. And so the people brought part of their harvest in to sustain the priests. Okay, so the Hebrew word for first fruits is B-I-K-K-U-R-I-M in the English translation. Bakurim. And it's translated the promise to come. The Israelites at the beginning, uh, they saw their first fruits offering as an investment in their future. The promise to come. They believed that if they gave their offering to the Lord at, for, at this harvest time, then they were promised a future. Uh, Proverbs says, uh, 3, 9 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with wine. So we see that first fruits offering ensured their increase and their barns be filled with plenty. Now, this was this was for this was for an agrarian society. And I, I don't know about you, but I don't have barns and I don't have a wine press to overflow with wine. So what in the world do these verses mean? It means that we give of what we have. We give first fruits offering. Now this is Old Testament, but we have to see how it applies in the new. So we're building then, and I hope you watched yesterday, we are building into what is uh, accomplished for now. In Jeremiah, it says, the time is coming, says the Lord, that I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and it will not be like the covenant that I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt because they broke that covenant. But I will make a new covenant and I'll put my laws in their minds and write it in their hearts. Now see that there's a change that's happened. There's a change in the way we celebrate and the way we understand Old Testament feasts. Scripture in Romans says one person regards a day over another. But we have to be convinced with this. Um, is it up to us whether we should celebrate a, a Jewish feast? Because if Jesus is the fulfillment, if he's the fulfillment of all of the Old Testament promises, if he is our Passover, if he is our first fruits, then we understand that he's the fulfillment and we don't have to twist the New Testament to agree to celebrate those 
old feast anymore because he is our feast. He is the one that he, uh, Hebrews says that he uh, didn't come to abolish those words, but he came to fulfill them. Jesus is the fulfillment of the feasts. So it's up to us to celebrate then the feast that we're coming into as a fulfillment. And when we look at when we look at the at the first fruits, for example, we worship the Lord because He fulfilled it. He became uh, the, He became what those feasts in, in, were the shadow of. They were the shadow uh, uh, of the reality of the release that's coming. The release that Jesus would be raised from the dead and the release of the Holy Spirit. Now, I have so much to tell you about that um, that I know you haven't heard from anybody before because it's just been such a revelation to me. And I'll be doing that in the next few days because the release of the Holy Spirit has just been... I think so diminished and we have just put it in a little box that this is what it means, but it is so much greater than anything that we've ever been able to express with our words or with our revelation before. But this first fruits harvest is in us in the New Testament is the visible expression of the power of God working inside of us. The word harvest is the same in the New Testament as the word bear fruit. So Jesus uses them both uh, and it's translated interchangeably. And yesterday we talked a lot about bearing fruit. Now, uh, we're not trying to have a cuddly little chatty time together here we're trying to uh, bring about a production of likeness and image what we are trying to achieve in these bible studies is not beaver cleaver happy little talks with people but we're trying to see how we can move into likeness and image paul uh, called epineatus and the household of stephen stephanus he called them both first fruits and that he meant that many, many were saved at that time. Paul also said that he was going to Rome to reap a harvest among the Jews as well as the Gentiles. He, so we see that it has a lot to do with, with the people being born again or saved, first fruits, in that regard. But now let's look at James, which... You know, I've taught so much about it, if you know me, but James 1 and 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Now, that's one of my most favorite scriptures in the world. Because God doesn't bring us anything bad. Did God br bring the coronavirus? You look at this verse and tell me. No, he did not. He is every good gift and perfect gift is from above. He is the father of lights in whom there's no what? Variableness or shadow of turning. So is God allowing the coronavirus to teach us something? No variableness. Only good comes from God. Only good. Well, he's teaching me a lesson. No, he is not. He is not. The only thing we can learn from coronavirus is to overcome it. What we can learn is how I, how I can overcome it. How the strategy that I need to live my life and to help other people maximize their intention upon the earth. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Lord, the Father of lights. And he doesn't change. He doesn't change. He doesn't say, oh, well, today I'm going to teach you through something horrible. In the New Testament, we understand that God is only good. I, I went to the islands and uh, around the world uh, early on just teaching that God was good. He's good. He's good. He doesn't try to punish us. Now, 
The next verse in the in the in the mirror Bible says uh, James one and eighteen. It was his delightful resolve to give birth to us. We were conceived by the unveiled logic or the truth of God. We were conceived by the unveiled logic of God. We lead the exhibition of his handiwork. Oh my gosh. Like first fruits introducing the rest of the harvest that he anticipates. See, the apostles were first fruits. They were leading as God's exhibition of his handiwork. And so are you. And so am I. This is not the end of the world. We are, uh, we are pioneers into this part of being exhibitors of God's handiwork. Like first fruits introducing what is coming behind us. Oh my God, my God, my God. Resolve then to have a purpose today in your life resolve to understand resolve to birth and bring forth you were birthed and conceived in truth according to truth if you ever seek for things that that you need truth has to be the predominant and prevailing link to wisdom and what we need now, first fruits were a production of the earth that was offered to God. And one of the definitions of first fruits is that it's a portion of the dough from which sacred loaves were to be prepared. A portion a piece. This is Cornelia. This is what we've been teaching all along. And here it is inside of first fruits that it is a portion of the dough, a piece. Speaking of what is to come. What is to come is, is a is a group of believers who are moving in likeness and image, who are set apart who are the revealing of Christ on earth. Romans 8 says, And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit. So we understand here that they are, they are coming into Pentecost and, and they are the first ones to receive the Holy Spirit. Oh my God. The first fruit offering of Jesus was to deliver the Holy Spirit. Jesus, who was filled with the Holy Spirit. My God. He had to go away so that that Spirit could come to his people. Now, Lazarus and Jairus died, but they... They, they were resurrected, and then they had to die again. Jesus was the first fruit that died and came alive and didn't die again. What a difference. <laughs> so, so we have then the ability today to understand that as a first fruit offering to the Lord, I, I can give... A, the fruit of my lips giving thanks. The fruit of my heart. It happens when we sing a new song. It happens when we love each other. It ha First fruits happens when we overcome this moment. When we understand that we're victorious. First fruits happens when we increase our understanding of who the Lord is. And first fruits is a time to give. Old Testament New Testament, not under the law, not under the Old Testament feasts. The, in the New Testament, we have no obligation other to, than to give cheerfully and liberally. There is no obligation to have to give. But in the New Testament, it is a delivery of who we are and what we have. Proverbs says we're honoring God with the giving of our first fruits. The, but we're saying the New Testament is we're the offering to God of our lives. 
and that which we have, the giving of our provision. So one lady who's on this group often, and she's sewing me face masks as her offering because that's what she has to offer. We give of our lives what we have to offer. Right? We sow what we want to receive. One lady um, in one of the churches where I used to be, she brought me an offering of fish head soup. And I'll never forget it because here are these eyeballs of fish and bones staring at me. No real fish in it, just fish heads and eyeballs. And she was so proud of her offering. And I and it had kind of a milky soup. And it meant so much to her. And and that was such a hard thing for me to to understand that one person's offering of what they have is so different from another person's offering. And so it was pressing to me to, even, I had to try to taste it and go, oh, thank you, you know, but you understand that the fruit of our lives is what we're giving. You see, we give what we have. And, and I, I told you about when I was in Mexico preaching, and while I was preaching, though, the, it was at a pastor's conference, and the pastor's wives started running up to me and, and, and taking off their earrings and their rings and their scarves, and they just covered me with their beautiful things that they had. The only things they had to give, they gave, and I, I was just covered with, with giving. Because they wanted to receive. They'd never seen a woman stand in full authority, in apostolic authority. They had only seen uh, pastors. They hadn't seen the authority of God on a woman. And they were sowing into that because they wanted to receive a portion of that. Are you with me? <laughs> in fact, I keep that picture of Mexico up on my website as my banner so that I can always remember those precious things. We sow into what we want to receive. As we move into this new system, we understand that it's not the same. It's not under obligation. But I felt like the Lord told me yesterday that giving opens the water spout onto your garden. We're growing these things in our heart, but it's giving that waters our garden. And, oh, man, I just thought that was powerful. It's always in, in his nature. So God told the Israelites that the first fruit offering was to be given in thanks for cities you did not build and houses full of all good things that you didn't fill and cisterns that you did not dig and vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant. We, we give even for the things that we didn't get or didn't want. But it is a time of giving and it is a time of sharing. And giving, yes, thank you for hearing that. Giving waters our garden. It opens the water spout and, and waters the garden of our heart. We're offering our heart. We're offering the, the seeds that have been planted in our heart. But giving is the water spout that releases the the energy for our our plants to grow so in jesus name then it's time for us to move into uh, our our communion together and how blessed i am that you're here the priest would wave in the old testament two loaves of bread it was the time of the early rain and so today, Lord, we offer up our lives. We, we, we offer up all that we have. No, I'm not talking about tithing. I'm talking about first fruits. Praise God. First fruits offering that we offer up that which is growing in our lives. 
the Passover bread, ha we learned over the weeks, has, has no leaven. But it seems to me that the new Pentecostal bread is leavened. Now, that's my opinion because the kingdom of God is like leaven. It's growing and growing and growing. And the kingdom of God is growing in you and it's growing in me. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, God, we partake of your body. And we see in first fruits that it's a piece of the whole, a piece of the whole piece of bread. We take and we understand that we are a piece of your body. And when we take partake of your body and come together, we reconnect. We remem remember. We re rejoin together. The pieces come together and make a loaf. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, we, re we remember you and we partake of your body in Jesus' name. And we believe, Lord, that we are healed, God, and that we are safe. And, Father, we pray for every sick person. God, we pray for every sick person in our home, every sick person in our city, every sick person in our nat nation. And we decree sickness for every sick person in the world. God, we declare miracles. We declare a, a, an uprising in your spirit being loosed upon people, Father, for healing. God, I thank you. I thank you for healing. God, I thank you for hearing about miracles all the time. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your blood because it it gives us the new covenant. It takes away all that's old. Your blood took away the old. It took away the old and it gives us the new. It gives us salvation. It gives us forgiveness. The life is in the blood. God, your blood gives us life in you. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. What a joy to be alive today. What an honor to be with you. We give of what we have, trusting the Lord for our increase. God gives, we give. We cannot just be taking. We need to be givers. I pray that you'll be giving today, this week, the rest of your life. I pray that you'll be a giver and that you'll be looking for things that you can give. Give of your friendship. Give of your heart. Give of your sustenance. Give of your kindness. Give of your mercy. Give of your money. Give of whatever you have to give because that's your first fruit offerings. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow and we won't have uh, all these computer problems tomorrow. So thank you. Thank you. Bless you. I've had a good time being with you today. Amen.